Hello, welcome to our video solutions to Super Quiz 3 from Math 302. That's our modern algebra course here at Cal State Fullerton. We're in spring 2021. This is the first problem from the Super Quiz. And here we're reminded at the beginning that uh, Gauss confusingly defined the least positive residues, modulo some number n, to be the numbers 0 through n minus 1. Of course, it's a little bit confusing because he, he calls them positive residues. And of course, 0 isn't a positive number. But we have to overlook it, and it's Gauss, and we don't question Gauss. So uh, in the three sub-problems here, A, B, and C, we're just basically asked to find these uh, a least positive residue for some number modulo, well, a given modulus. So in the first one, for example, we want to find uh, the least positive residue for 97 modulo 7. So this is a pretty simple problem if you know what it means to reduce something, modulo 7. So let's very briefly talk about that. Um, there's, of course, a, a definition, right? Uh, A is congruent to B modulo, well, we'll say 7 here, or could be anything, N, uh, if... 7 divides b minus a. So that is a very useful definition for proving things. Uh, however, for doing computations, uh, I think it might be in, in some ways easier to think about it in the following way. Um, so modulo 7, we treat 7 as 0. So if you have 7 plus 4, that's just the same thing as 0 plus 4. And because 7 we treat as 0, every multiple of 7 is a 0. So if you have a 14 or a 21 or a 28, those are all multiples of 7. And because 7 is 0, those are all 0. So one way I could very quickly... Uh, try to solve this problem, uh, other than with just straight division, which uh, sometimes we, we really try to avoid in this class, is I could just start subtracting off multiples of 7. Right? So we treat 7 as 0, and hence all multiples are, are 0. All multiples of 7 are 0. So what I could do is just say, well, 97 is congruent to, well, what do I want to do? I'm going to subtract off 70. All right, that's a really nice multiple of 7, a really easy one. So when I do, I just get 27. Now, 27 is not the least positive residue because I need actually a number between 0 and 6. So I just need to get rid of some more 7s. Now, one very quick thing is you might notice, well, this is 1 less than a multiple of 7. So that would actually would be helpful. But let's just say we didn't notice that. Um, how many 7s can I get rid of? Well, how about 3 of them, right? If I get rid of 21, <coughs> then I'll be left with 6. And 6 is a least positive residue because it's between 0 and, well, 7 minus 1, which is 6. So 97 is congruent to 6 modulo 7. Okay, again, you could also do division. You could say, okay, well, 7 goes into 97. Let's see, it goes into 9 once. There's a 7. Uh, 7 goes into 27. Let's see, it goes in three times. Remainder 6, and it doesn't go in anymore, so I get a remainder of 6. And hey, that's my least positive residue. So that's another way you can do it. All right. But, okay, uh, I, I, I do enjoy doing this subtraction method. Again, if we, by the way, had subtracted 28, what would have happened? Right? So if we'd subtracted 28, we would have got congruent to negative 1, which is not a least positive residue. So we would have then had to go back up. How would we have done it? We'd add 7, right? Because, again, you can just add 7 because we treat 7 as 0, and this would be congruent to 6. And that's actually going to be useful in Part B. In Part B, we're trying to find negative 43 modulo 9. So here, we're starting with something negative, and we want to work our way up to a positive residue, something between 0 and 8. So what I want to do is add an appropriate multiple of 9. Okay, well, this, this actually feels pretty easy here, because, well, I know my multiples of 9, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. Ooh, 45, that'll get me over the hump. So if I add 45 to this, I get 2. Well, 2 is a least positive residue because it's between 0 and 9 minus 1. So there we go.
Modulo 9, negative 43 is congruent to 2. Now we get to the last one, and this is the one, right, which is, is meant to frighten you a little bit, but it, it's actually not uh, so horrible. So the first thing is, if you have uh, a product, some a times b, and why am I thinking about a product here? Well, this is an exponent, and exponent is just, well, you think about it as a repeated product. So a times b, this very simple case, right? In fact, here I'd have like 6659 times itself 333 times. So Gauss proved that if big A is congruent to little a and big B is congruent to little b, then ab is congruent to little a times little b. Okay, modulo whatever it is we're talking about. So when we have something like this, you have an a to the n, and if we know that big A is congruent to little a, then big A to the n will be congruent to little a to the n. Now, we have to be very careful here. Gauss proved that you can reduce the base of an exponential, but not the exponent itself. So what this means is I can reduce 6,659 modulo 5, I cannot reduce 333 modulo 5. That wouldn't be allowed. All right, but let's see if we do it correctly, what we can, what we can get here. So 6,659 modulo 5. Well, nice thing about 5 is the multiples are really easy, right? They're, they're basically, they're going to end in a 0 or they're going to end in a 5. So sort of the closest multiple I can think of a 5 that, you know, it's going to be close to this, that's not too big, right? I I'm usually like to get maybe a, a least positive residue the first time and then play around with it if it's that's not good. Um, I could, whoops, not congruent, I could subtract out 6,655. That'll be a multiple of 5, and it'll only leave me with 4 left. And so now I'll have 6,659 to the 333rd power is congruent modulo 5 to 4 to the 333rd power. Okay, well, this is fine, right? But actually, I would have actually preferred to go a little bit more because 4 is congruent to negative 1 modulo 5, and that's going to be a lot easier to do an exponential of, right? So instead of subtracting 6,655, I could have subtracted 6,660. Again, a multiple of 5 and I'd have something now which is congruent to negative one mod five, right? These are all mod five here. All right, well, if I did it that way, then I would get that 6,659 to the 333 power is congruent to negative one to the 333rd power. But negative one, that's really easy to raise to powers. This is an odd number. Negative one raised to an odd numbered power is going to be negative one. And so we've actually been able to reduce this original very complicated problem, something you, know, you don't even want to do on a calculator usually, right? It will run out of space. But we can modulo 5 very, very easily uh, get an answer to this. All right? So this will be negative 1, which, of course, again, we're going to want a least positive residue at some point, so we may have to convert this to a 4. We'll see. We better check what 8 to the 8 is. Now, 8 to the 8 is going to be simultaneously a lot easier because, hey, aren't those numbers so much smaller? And actually a little bit harder. I can reduce the, the 8 here. So 8, I could subtract a 5, and I'll get that's congruent to 3 mod 5. So my 8 to the 8, my 8 to the 8 is actually going to be the same thing as 3 to the 8 mod 5. Okay, alternatively, if we don't like 3, because 3 feels so big, we could have subtracted 10. And that would have given us negative 2 mod 5. And so that would tell us that 8 to the 8 is congruent to negative 2 to the 8 mod 5. Now, you might say, well, yeah, but I don't like having this negative here. Ah, but look, we're raising it to an even-numbered power. That's not too shabby. 
If I raise to an even number power, that negative is going to go away anyway. So in fact, this is going to be actually the same thing, right? It'll be congruent to 2 to the 8th power mod 5. Now, 2 to the 8th, we actually could just work it out directly, right? I mean, we could sit there and go, okay, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and hey, modulo 5, 256, well, this is one more than 255. So this is actually going to be congruent to 1 modulo 5. Okay, but maybe you, you're a little worried about finding eight powers of two, or maybe you're you're actually concerned that it's going to be a bigger number than eight. I mean, what if this had been 88? Well, you certainly didn't want to do it this way. What we could do, though, is instead of computing all these powers just in, in regular uh, integers, we could compute them modulo five. So this is in Z, but what if we do it in Z mod 5Z? So I'd still have 2 and then 4. When I multiply by 2 again and I get 8, I can reduce that modulo 5 to 3. Now 3 times 2 is 6, which is actually the same as 1. I multiply by 2 and I'm back to 2 and it's going to just repeat. 2, 4, 3, 1. So I actually notice I get a nice periodic pattern. If this had been 88 instead of just an 8, I would have just said, okay, how many of these are in the pattern? Oh, there's four. Oh, cool. 88's a multiple of four. So two to the 88th, two to the 88th is also one mod five. Huh, how neat. What if it had been two to the 87th? Well, you just go back one. You go back one to the three. Okay, so we can get that. That's not too shabby. All right, so in total, our 6,659 to the 333rd power was the same as negative 1. And our 8 to the 8 was the same as positive 1. So we get negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. So 6,659 to the 333rd power minus 8 to the 8 is congruent to negative 2. Now, that's not the final answer because, again, we wanted the least positive residue, so we need something between 0 and 4. Okay, but that's easy enough. If I add 5, which again, we're treating as 0, then this gives me a 3 modulo 5. And there's our answer. All right, hopefully this was very helpful for you.